Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to see you here this morning. Um, before we begin with a word of prayer, we're going to, of course, remember Dwight. He has some, some eye problems, and uh, we know that he needs strength in trial, just like all of us do, and uh, pray for this meeting as well. So let's begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the opportunity to study your word together and um, to look into these things that you have been revealing to us, unfolding to us over the past little while in uh, the book of Judges, especially in relationship uh, <clears throat> to the story of Gideon and July 18, 2020. We just ask for wisdom and understanding, clear minds, and open heart. We pray for those struggling. We lift up Dwight. We ask that you can bless him and help him in his time of trial, that you can help each of us to reflect your character. We're grateful, Lord, for uh, the way that you prove and test us, that you prepare us for the trials ahead, even though it can be difficult. Be with us now through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so um, we're continuing to look at Judges chapter 8. Now, um, I'm going to just note here that I had, um, I put, so we have Colin's presentation on December 25th. Uh, 2021 and uh, so if you look down there at the bottom of the this diagram and I just recently just a few minutes ago changed that September February 16th date to February 12th 2022 and this refers to Odilio's study uh, that he gave on the vaccine mandates so to me that way mark should be in there somehow um So when we, we look at this, we know from uh, October 9th, to um, December 25th is 77 days. What was the question there? Oh, so what was uh, July 19th, 2020 again? Um, well, July 19, 2020, that's just the day after July 18, 2020. So oh, okay. that's when oh, okay. the call was made so that we were uh, looking at the call. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then we had Judges 8-1. That's going to be um, December 6, 2020. Yeah, that was FFA's uh, declaration. Yeah. And then October 9th is what happened with in the meeting um, with... Uh, <clears throat> Mark Johnson and Daniel Fontenot. Well, this is going to actually be a week after that. So the meeting is October 2nd. So there's this one week in there. Um, okay. So on October 2nd, we're going to have uh, that meeting. And then October 9th is the last communication I have with Daniel. So Daniel uh, compares me to Judas on October 2nd. Um, and then on October 9th, um, yeah, I remember, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, and so, and, and I don't have the meeting, so I was doing these weekly studies. I don't know if, I think it was weekly studies. I can't remember. Maybe it's every second week. But I was having these studies on the book of Hebrews. So in that afternoon, I did my last study on October 2nd on the book of Hebrews in chapter 8 with the American group. And then we picked it up later. We started uh, staggering those meetings whenever Daniel Fontenot wasn't presenting. So I think I was just doing the meetings every second week. Daniel Fontenot took over that, those meetings. And uh, so anyway, I'm marking October 9th and the seven, 77 days um, okay. to December 25th. And that's gonna be Penuel and Sokoth. That's what Stephen had is. Uh... Yeah, the 777 years from 457 BC to 321. Right, right, right. So the Sunday law. So the understanding of the Sunday law, and of course, that's the symbol 
that we had the 20th day and the ninth month and December 25th uh, for the Sunday law. So there's a bunch of symbols in there that we had understood previously, but Stephen had this insight. But also on that day, Colin presents uh, dividing the gold is his presentation, where he's going to present that Trump is going to uh, become the president in connection. And, and ultimately, that's going to be in connection with these midterm elections. So that, he, was the 20, that was the 25th, right? Yeah, the 25th. And so it all happened on the 25th. Okay. Yeah. And so then, and then that meeting, of course, I had the another conflict this time with Colin. So, I mean, we could put October 2nd in there, uh, to 9th, if we wanted to for the penule thing. So if we, if we take this, you know, we could put October 2nd to 9th. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, right. Then we have the 77 days. <clears throat> and, um, and then from, and then we're going to have, uh, from there, we're going to have February 12th. Then that's going to be 49 days. So we're going to have uh, seven weeks, right? So I'll copy this here. Forty-nine days, <clears throat> and this whole period, um, if we're going from the ninth to the twelfth, is a period of one hundred and twenty-six days, right? Yeah. Okay. So that gives us a, a symbol of the twenty-five twenty plus. So I probably could grab one of these little. Things here. Let's put it there. Okay, that makes sense. So we're going to have 126 days here. Okay, so I mean that that deals with uh, the rejection then, or the resistance of support for this movement, for for what we're understanding as far as July 18th and the light that's coming from it. So there's this uh, resistance. Um, so that's the Pinuel and Sukkot, but also we would have to place here. Uh, Colin and Odilio, their presentations. So in that resistance, they end up with this uh, message that is, is illustrating the lack of support for the understanding that's been given. So for me, the, the way that I look at this is we had all this light that's been given since July 19th. It's going to be rejected by FFA but it's also going to be rejected by people in this movement because these two interpretations that Odilio and Colin have come from a lack of understanding of the lines themselves, what God was showing us, that our lines were typical. And so both of their, their understandings of, of the pandemic and the vaccine mandates and also Trump come from this idea that these are not typical events, even though they will say that the pandemic is typical of the Sunday law. It's a type of the Sunday law. They're acting as if it's not, that we're going to have this Sunday law immediately. Now, um, so in connection with this, so let me see here. Um,
so we, we I got, um, I guess it was yesterday, November 9th, we got the email from Three Angels Messages Fellowship. Good morning, Dwight. Nice to see you. Good morning. And um, so the, in, in their email, uh, they have a, a, a diagram, a picture saying probation is about to close, right? So it, they're mentioning the close of probation. They're also offering um, uh, Collins, the PDFs for Collins Bible studies. Uh, so they attach Brother Collins' presentation from last Sabbath, uh, which he's entitling Daniel's Last Vision, number nine. And... Um, and then if we would like to have all of his other presentations, please reach out to me in the PDFs will be sent to you, file size permitting. So, so hopefully I can get all of the, I know there was one that she said it was too large before when I asked her for it. Um, but- uh, You have to reach out to Kathy. Yeah, reach out to Kathy. <clears throat> Didn't that what I said? You said reach out to me. They could have misunderstood. I, oh, yeah, okay, but I'm reading what she said here. I'm just anyway, yeah, okay, to make sure okay. <laughs> yeah, so Kathy says reach out to me, which is her, right? Um, okay, so anyway, when we're looking at this diagram here, so Dwight missed this. What I did is I placed um, uh, Odilio's presentation on February 12th. Now, I, I didn't put which verse that is yet, but um, um, we have judges. Uh, 8 verse 6 as marking December 25th, 2021. And we have um, October 2nd to 9th as marking uh, uh, Penuel, that's Judges 8-8. Eight, eight. So Penuel and Succoth, this is the, the rejection of the ask for support that the message of July 18th was seeking. And so I mark these with these two events that I experienced and then the aftermath of that. So obviously October 2nd is a week before October 9th. And then from October 9th, there's 77 days to December 25th, 2021. And then from Colin's presentation to Odilia's presentation, his first presentation uh, dealing with the vaccine mandates and so forth is 49 days. So you have seven weeks. Together the 77 days and the 49 days is 126 days. So I would think that that's quite significant. <clears throat> it's got good symbolism to it. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. yes, I was not here yesterday. I did, however, go over yesterday's presentation. Yeah. Now, Part of, of what I had looked at goes back to presentation that Elder Jeff had given on Daniel's last vision. Mm -hmm. If we were, and I, I commend this to all that are viewing these studies, if we were to take a look at that presentation, I think some of the things that were being addressed yesterday would become very clear. Okay, more specifically, what would... I'm just getting there. Okay. Bear with me, I'm going slowly. That's fine. Lack of, lack of sleep will do this to me. Mm -hmm. This presentation was given on May 9th of 2020. Okay. Five, nine. Five by nine is 45. Mm -hmm. Elder Jeff, in this presentation, was being very direct that the message for the priests was the understanding of Mill Millerite time frame and specifically about Samuel Snow's letters. 
the message then goes forward for the priests. But, excuse me, the Levites. Okay. My bad. That makes more sense. <laughs> so, in order to give the message to the Levites, the priests also have to have a very good understanding of that message before it can be given. And the message for the Levites is the message of <laughs> July 18th. Mm -hmm. Now, what strikes me and strikes me very odd, as you were saying yesterday, of course, Daniel Fontenot cut you off on about October 2nd. Mm -hmm. I believe he did the same thing with me about a week later, because if I'm not mistaken, that's when I was in Los Angeles to attend a funeral of one of my best friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually October 9th is the last communication that I had with him. Okay. So he sent me an email. I responded. He never responded to that. But okay. for the second we had the meeting. So we have this one week, right? From when that controversy arose during uh, the meeting at the American group study. And uh, then the 77 days um, to December 25th. Right. Now, <clears throat> the messages that have been being presented in both the Canadian group and in the American group have very little to do with anything having to do with July 18th. Mm -hmm. Other than have, some of the chronology um, that symbols that they had for uh, the for the lines themselves, but even then they ignored that. So, for instance, with Colin's study, I sorry to interrupt you there, but with Colin's study on um, the prophetic mirror dealing with the election, um, he doesn't pay attention to the symbols of July 18th that confirm his chronology and Adilio uses the basically the same symbols in his presentation that he did on February 12th so, so there is references or at least connections to July 18th that that most people ignore and aren't interested in uh, that's why Adilio's presentations aren't well recept accepted they're not well received uh, by many people in the movement because of their their references to July 18th as a symbol. But Colin sort of ignores that. Right. It strikes me because if the priests are required to have an understanding of Millerite history and specifically with Samuel Snow's letters, and the Levites are needed to understand July 18th and its message and its chronology. Setting these aside would be, ser would be spiritual suicide. Mm -hmm. Now, everything that we're doing here with Gideon, ties right back into what we've been talking about with July 18th. We are dealing with this as an example of what was necessary for Gideon to understand in reference to righteousness by faith in order to go forward to drive out the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the children of the East. And I believe when we get further into this, especially as we've looked at this before in Judges 8, we will see that the Midianites became no longer a force after what, what had occurred with Gideon. Yeah, so um, 
so what we're saying is that this defeat of the Midianites as a symbol, this, this uh, spirit of criticism is what needs to be defeated in order for us to be able to come together, share a message, and to do the work in reaching the Levites. Right. Now, the situation from here also is we need to come to a clearer understanding of what is needed of us to be able to give this message. Elder Jeff laid it out for us and laid it out very simply and very directly. Yeah. Most of what you're going to find, and I, I thank you, Iran, for posting that in the chat. Most of what you will find in Elder Jeff's presentation that I'm referencing, you should find from about 35 minutes to about 40 minutes. But the entire presentation is excellent. If we're not willing to apply ourselves, if we are not willing to strain every fiber of our being in understanding these lines and these examples, then we will not likely be among the 144,000. And we may not even likely be among the priests. So all of this is important for us. There cannot be a second chance after this. So there's a lot for us to consider right now. Yeah. And, and the other thing that we can look at here is um, this one week here from October 2nd to 9th. Yes. Days, followed by 18 weeks because um, 126 days is 18 weeks. Again, you have a symbol of July 18. Right, in connection with this, this span of time, this 126 days. So you've got one week, October 2nd to 9th, which is seven, and then 18 weeks. So that's July 18. So there's all these different symbols just tied up in, in these dates that we have here. <clears throat> so, so thanks for that, Dwight. Um, now, we is have, Gideon, what's that? Is Gideon the message of July 18? Yes, that's what okay. Gideon is. It's the message of July 18. So... <clears throat> So this, this, this message loses its support. It's not supported. Um, no. Now, we're, we're going to have this, then the response. So we're going to have Ziba and Zamuna are defeated. Now, um, the way that we were looking at this, if we're going to deal with Ziba and Zamuna, um, I'm, I'm taking this as being specifically the messages of Colin and Odilio, right? So the message regarding the pandemic and the message regarding Trump. Um, any, any thoughts on that? So, so what we're going to have here when we, when we go back to our, uh, go back here again quickly. So when we go back to this diagram, we have the Penuel and the Sokos. So we have, um, we have the, the rejection of support, but then we also have the defeat of Ziba and Zamuna. So Ziba and Zamuna are, are connected with December 25th and February 12th. That is Colin's message and Odilio's message. But remember, these were were these were at Mount Tabor, right? Right. Okay. So that means these messages have a relationship 
to what happened with Sisera, the story of Sisera, Deborah and Barak, right? Sisera being the enemy, Deborah and Barak being the judges. So that means that there is remnants of that message contained within what Odilio and Colin were presenting. Is that how we would understand it? Because remember, these are messages. And it's not a condemnation of Colin or Odilio as persons. It's just, right. it's just these messages themselves. Because in my view and understanding, I have no problem with Colin or Odilio. I think it's just that the messages that they've given have neglected to, to incorporate the understanding that God has given us since July 19th, starting on July 19th. So I, hmm? I thought you gave the, their thing over to Oreb and Zia. I thought that's what you said last time. Yeah. So this is a repeat and enlarge, and it's going to be using the same uh, the same idea, right? So you got this twofold enemy. And because this line is repeating what the other line had, we would have to then um, because we also have, in a sense, that with um, these tests of the fleece as well. We, we somehow could, I mean, we're going to have these messages, right? So we have a double sort of message, a double test. That's the fleece, right? In the first line you see there. But that's going to be the presentation of the understanding of, uh, or examining the foundation and then the understanding of the lines. And both of these things then lead to um, what ends up happening in connection with these uh, these, these tests, right, that this movement is presented with. <clears throat> is, does that make sense to people? Or, or Rosanna, do you have more questions on that? Not quite sure. <laughs> yeah. So Oreb and Zeb, I mean, specifically what we said about Oreb and Zeb is that had to do with um, uh, the wolf and the raven, right? Right. So, so what did we say about Oreb and Zeb specifically? Why, why those symbols? And now we have the Zeb and Zalmuna one. So they're, they're related to each other because this is, this is just an, it's, it's a line, right? And this line is illustrating the same thing, but different details addressed to it. <clears throat> so when we go back to Judges 7, so here, let's go back here again. For the raven, I had looked it up and I, I didn't have my paper in front of me last time, but mm -hmm. it says God's gracious provision. Okay, I'm not sure how they get that from the from Oreb. So it must be, they must be trying to use some other route. They must be somehow understanding that word quite differently. I think it's because the raven fed the people. Okay, well, fed, well, the raven fed uh, Elijah, so maybe, but the word itself just means it, it comes from dusk, having to do with the color of the, of the animal, and, and Zeb, of course, being the wolf, right? So we, we took those as these, these messages that are going to be defeated. Right. That's going to be Odilio's and um, Collins' messages. Is that how we took it, Oreb and Zeb? But these these aren't these are sort of because this has to do with the spirit of criticism more than anything. Um,
but they're definitely related as we can see in this. Um, now, what I was saying is that this was Orban, uh, or Ziba and Zalmuna were referring to uh, the American group and the Canadian group, or no, pardon me, not Ziba and Zalmuna, but um, uh, Sukoth and Penuel as referring to those groups. But they're not going to support in, in pursuing Ziba and Zalmuna. So, so we're just thinking here, you know, and trying to understand this, but I would say that Ziba and Zalmuna, because what we are trying to do is correct something that has come into the movement that's going to be expressed by these two different studies, right? And this, this is something that is really an inheritance from Parminder. So when we look at Judges 8 and we, we put this story together, this has to be the messages of Trump and the vaccines. And, and why would I say that that is where what what is it that we're inheriting from the story of Cicero? What is it that these are illustrating that we can connect back to Parminder's teachings? Quite specifically. Anyone? Because what was Parminder teaching that still is not understood by the movement as being error? Got on the tip of my tongue and I can't get it out. <laughs> Wouldn't it have to do with how we understand the lines? Oh, yeah, okay. So Parmeter very specifically said, waymarks cannot typify other waymarks. And, and this was a shock to me when he said it. And it was even a further shock when Jeff supported that because Jeff was then doing a presentation where he started talking about how one way Mark typified another. And then he says, well, I can't say that. I have to find some other word. Because Jeff understood the principle that a way Mark rep represents a three-step testing prophetic message within it. So it has to be able to typify the other way marks. Every way Mark once it's zoomed into, is a reform line. Now, we've just come to really understand this as we've gone through our examination of understanding the lines, that we, we have the clear examples of how that occurs. And that is not understood by the movement. Odilio and Colin don't understand that, right? Because they haven't been following the studies. So Adelio is holding on to a, an understanding that we had prior to July 18th in trying to understand the pandemic. And he correctly lays out the chronology and introduces even a new symbol, uh, 1629, which we see as a valid symbol. It's something that, that we even need to explore further. Right, so, we, so we have this symbol, 1629. And we also have um, an understanding of the lines dealing with Trump, because if we, so we have that with the pandemic, we don't understand the lines are typical, right? So we don't realize that the pandemic is typical and what that means in context of the lines and how to zoom in onto a waymark and recognize where we are. And in Colin's study, in trying to preserve what Jeff was saying about Trump, that he's the last president of the United States. We ignore um, Millerite history and their understanding of Revelation 12, 13, and 17. And, and we don't recognize that our interpretation of Revelation 17 is the result of a zoom into a waymark that is there's nothing wrong with how we've laid out Revelation 17. 
if we understand that the interpretation that we have is because of a repeat of history and not the original interpretation of Revelation 17. That is, we understand Revelation 17 in the way that we do because we can repeat history. Correct? That's what we, we did in, in the study on the presidents of the United States. Agreed. Yeah. So, so that was not a repudiation of our understanding of Revelation 17. Just that we needed to understand that we could look at that in a typical way. And it is fulfilled in a typical way. And, and it's still something that we further have to look at together as a group. Once this movement comes together, these are the things that we will study uh, that we can then have a clear understanding. But if we didn't spend time looking at uh, examining the foundation, looking at Millerite history, how they understood the daily and all these different things and how they're, they're thinking, um, the faults that they had with their, their thinking, the mistakes that they had made, the inconsistencies they had, we can't understand our own inconsistencies. That is, we've made the same mistakes as, as the Millerites. And so we did that with July 18th, but we had already the key to understand our disappointment, just as the Millerites did, right? So one of the keys to understanding their disappointment on October 22nd, 1844, was that in the message that they had regarding Christ cleansing the sanctuary, we had the typical service of Christ as our high priest, clearly presented um, by uh, Samuel Snow. And so they had the key provided to them, which they should have seen that if Christ begins his work on the Day of Atonement, on October 22nd, 1844, that it's not going to end on that day, that this marks the beginning of a work which they wanted to have all wrapped up in a single day, you know, the seven last plagues, all these things of what they had taught before would all have to occur on that day. And so it made no sense to expect that Christ would return when he's beginning the work on the day of atonement. And, and so we had the same type of thing in the understanding of our lines that we had neglected all kinds of things that we understood had to happen. And, you know, in connection with November 9th and July 18th, that didn't happen, and we just ignored that. So, <clears throat> so anyway, getting back to Ziva and Zalmuna, um, this would have to be connected with those messages, because it has to be a message, right? Ziva and Zalmuna are messages, and they're going to be defeated by the message of July 18th. That is, the further understanding of light that's unfolded after July 18th. But these enemies still need to be chased down. And they were there at Mount Tabor. That is, these, the errors that produce these messages are errors that were taught prior to November 9th, prior to, to this time, right? Now, we had, we had asked about the inquiry as well. So if we look here, we got um, in Judges 8.13, the Gideon, Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle before the sun was up. Um, so, so this is, I know we're jumping around a little bit here. So they're going to conquer Zeba and Zalmuna, and Gideon returns from the battle before the sun was up. Right now, it says before the sun. Now, the was up is added. But uh, that's what's understood here in the text. So, what does that mean? We know that this battle then occurred at night. That's the idea. What, what do these symbols mean?
if we take this symbolically, <clears throat> the he, he is returning from the battle before further light is given. Okay, well, yes, but, but the sun, the rising of the sun has a specific meaning. Okay. Right, because we know that we have night, and in night we have midnight, right? So you have sunset, midnight, sunrise. Right. And and we also can say that there's there's a symbol here, 813, symbol of Palmoni, right? <clears throat> Correct. And and the rising of the sun can also be referenced to sun worship, to, to the Sunday, to the Sunday law. Or am I stretching this too much? That's a stretch. Okay. Well, if we look at our line, our line ends on December 25th, right? And we're looking okay. at Judges, Judges 8 as a zoom in to December 25th. So, so there is the suggestion of the sun as the morning, right? We would, we would agree with that. Okay. In order to have a line and have midnight, you have to have sunset midnight, and then sunrise. And at the end of our line, we always mark sunrise, technically, as October 22nd, 1844, right? Because we have sun, sunset is going to be the first day of the first month, if midnight is July 21st, 1844. So the sunrise has to be October 22nd, 1844, which we mark as the Sunday law. All right. Okay. So that's the morning, right? If, mid if midnight is between sunset and sunrise, then morning is October 22nd, 1844, which we mark as the Sunday law. So we would have to say that this is before the Sunday law, before December 25th, 2021. as a symbol. So Gideon captures, conquers Ziba and Zalmuni. He captures them prior to December 25th, 2021. So this is, this is how I understand it, whether it's correct or not. But if we go to this chart here, I'm saying that this history here of from July 18th to December 25th, 2021, we have this, we have um, this call for support, right? That he gives to Penuel and Succoth, but first Succoth, then Penuel. Um, but he's going to then conquer Ziva and Zalmuna. That is, he's going to come to understand this error prior to December 25th, 2021. Now, maybe I'm wrong in that, but I see that symbol there. And, and at least, the very least we could say is that in this symbol, we have this line of Judges 8 as referencing December 25th, 2021. Any thoughts on that? So the way that I'm looking at it is that we have had the understanding to defeat Zeba and Zalmuna. We're not supported by the American group and the Canadian group in our understanding of things. Correct. Right. So we have to capture Ziba and Zamuna. That is, we have to understand what those enemies are. And yet 
the American and Canadian group aren't going to support us in that pursuit of Ziva and Zelmuni. And they're going to present messages then that, that illustrate their lack of support. Right? Just as they've been doing, yes. Right. So, and those are going to be given on December 25th and February 12th. So I'm saying that, you know, that's Ziba and Zamuna are these messages, at least messages that are tied to the past. I've also, like you were noting yesterday, and I believe Stephen was noting as well, it's interesting to see the tie-in here with the 777, but also with the 49 or the 490, however, however we'd want to see that. Yeah, well, it's the 49 is the 490. It's, yeah. And, and remember that on December 25th, what did Stephen find? December 25th, 2021. What was the light that was given to Stephen? I don't recall. He recognized that from 457 BC, which starts the 490 years. Right. That if he counted 777 years, he would come to the Sunday law in 321. That's right. Okay. So you can see how those symbols are illustrated here in the 77 days representing the 777 years and the 49 days representing the 490. But this is not just by chance. No, no, it's not by chance. So, I mean, we have all of these things being illustrated here. Now, Judges 8 isn't presented chronologically in, in how we would lay it down on the lines in the way that we did with the other ones, right? We can see Judges 8.8 8 and Judges 8.6 are inverted here. And then I'm suggesting the pursuit or the pursuance of uh, pursuit, I guess is fine, of Ziba and Zalmuna is something that Gideon is doing, the July 18, 2020 message is doing, which is connected with an examination or an inquiry into understanding the nature of Ziba and Zalmuna, right? Okay. And, 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 and also this inquiry about the the 77, right? So when we go back here, um, remember, so you have 813 and 1814, he catches a young man of the men of Sukkoth and inquired of him. He described unto him the princes of Sukkoth and the elders thereof, even three score and 17 men, so 77 men. And so we can see how this is all tied up together. This inquiry, this pursuing of Ziba and Zalmuna is trying to understand what's going on within the movement. Because the July 18th message, when it's understood, will expose the errors of Ziba and Zalmuna, but also expose the men of Sukkoth and the men of Penuel. Right? It is it's going to show that they were in error in not supporting July 18th. So I don't put Ziba and Zalmuna there, their capture and stuff later on. I put it earlier. And, and that to me is suggested by the fact that 8.8 eight and 8.6 are inverted from the chronological sequence that, that's given. So so I'm, I'm just placing this all together. So 8.6 eight, and 8.8. Eight, eight. So the things that follow the pursuit of Ziba and Zalmuna actually occur before October 2nd, uh, 2021. This is something that has been going on. Um, that is, we've been understanding this message prior to this lack of support that occurs. So it's, it's kind of backwards, the way that the story is told. It's kind of like a mirror, right? So I'm not going to put those way marks of Ziba and Zamuna being killed and all that. I'm not going to put them after February 12th in, in this context, or at least the pursuing of them I'm not. Maybe the killing of them we can place here later on. 
but the pursuing of them is something that happens in connection with this history, right, of December 25th, 2021. <clears throat> So I hope it's clear to people how, how we're doing this, how we're taking this Judges chapter eight, because it, it's not being laid out just in chronologically as the story is being told, that we just get these dates. I mean, we're introduced in Judges 8, one to basically what we mark as December 6, 2020. And the reason we did that had to do with the symbols that were there, right? So, you know, so when we, we take this, um, this, the, the men of Ephraim, we're going to have to look at that as referring to what happened on December 6, 2020. And then we have this pursuing of Zeba and Zalmunna, but the men of Sukkoth, and the men of Penuel, which represents, to me, the American and Canadian groups. Um, is then going to be um, uh, this lack of support that's given to the examination of these messages. So there isn't the same interest in examining July 18th. Now, we talked about how... Um, Daniel Fontenot supports July 18th, especially after July 18th. He did presentations on that. But his understanding of July 18th did not include any of the light that we were given regarding July 18th being a failed prediction. And so he simply put July 18th as a parallel with October 22nd, 1844, and did not place it as a parallel with July 18th, 1844. And Whatever his reasons for reacting to me the way he did on October 2nd and why he ended up ceasing communication on October 9th, uh, 2021, I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking, um, what has come into his thinking regarding this. But he isn't accepting the new light, right? So he's not accepting the messages that come from me He's labeled, as far as I understand it, as abstract theology. I'm not sure what he means by that, because uh, he doesn't appear to understand what the word abstract means. Because when we deal with a symbol, is a symbol abstract? I would say no. By, by definition, a symbol is abstract. I mean, the number three is an abstraction of the quantity of something we call three. Numbers are abstract. And, and if you're going to say that, that I'm just teaching abstract theology, which he sort of just dismisses with a wave of his hand without really explaining what it is, saying we all know what abstract means. I'm not sure if he does. Um, but we know that there's all kinds of abstractions that we have to understand in order to understand God's word. Any symbol is an abstraction. So there's nothing wrong with abstractions themselves. And so there's nothing that, that we do that's sort of, um, you know, airy fairy, so to speak. Everything that we're doing is very solid. It's based upon understanding how to study God's word by comparing scripture with scripture to understand what the symbols mean. And so you can't have July 18th without understanding abstractions. You know, if you're going to use 813 as a symbol of Palmoni, that's an abstraction. If you're going to look at Daniel 813 and see uh, the Fibonacci sequence represented there, and an octave of a diatonic scale and an octave of a chromatic scale represented. All the different symbols in nature that we can connect to 813. Um, we would have to look at that as an abstraction. So 
when we're pursuing this, these enemies, these princes of Midian, Ziba and Zalmunna, we know that they're also connected to the Midianites. That is, they're connected to a message that is critical of people. That is, the way that the opposition that has happened to anything that I've done or said is not by directly addressing what's been taught, but it's been addressed by a criticism of a person. That's ad hominem. That's the attacking the man rather than what the person is teaching. Correct? So, so when we look at the, yeah, so when we look at the message of the Midianites, it's the message of strife, and July 18th, and what we're studying, laying these things out on a line, this is a restorative message. The whole purpose of this message that God has given us is to bring together this movement so that it can be united in accomplishing its tax, task of giving a message to the Levites, to the Seventh-day Adventists who are searching for light. That, that's the purpose of this movement. And, and nothing in what we're doing is meant to attack any person. As far as I understand, every single person in this movement is still being called to come to the upper room. No disagreement. <clears throat> now, when we look at Judges 8.15, of course, 8.15 is a symbol of the midnight cry. Um, he came unto the men of Sukkoth and said, Behold, Ziba and Zalmunna, with whom ye did upbraid me, saying, Are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna now in thine hand? that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary, right? So and he had inquired, right? So he wanted to understand these princes of Sukkoth, right? So he inquires of a young man. And then he can recognize when he comes to, unto the men of Sukkoth, and he's going to present that Ziba and Zamuna are in my hand. You upbraided me. But... You were wrong in doing so because we captured them. And, and then he's going to take uh, the elders of the city and thorns of, of the wilderness and briars. And with them, he taught the men of Sukkoth. So how is he teaching them? What is the method of instruction? So we have these thorns. Um, so these are thorns and we have briars. So these are just both of these mean a reference to thorns. Uh, Barquan and uh, for, for briars and quotes for thorns, but they really mean the same thing. But notice there's a doubling there. So how, how are they being taught? And here taught is this word yada which means to know, instruction. Uh, it also can refer to punishment. But the idea here is that uh, it's a punishment that's meant to instruct a person. This would be a type of discipline when you're disciplined. Disciple is the root of the word discipline. So when you got disciplined in school, you were actually being taught or corrected. So what are these thorns and briars that the July 18, 2020 message is going to use to correct the men of Sukkoth? We're saying the men of Sukkoth are reference to the Canadian group. That there the be thorns and thorns. Sorry. Okay. 
Jeff? I was going to say thorns, thorns and briars choke, choke something out. Okay. Um, they can, right? So, you know, if we're looking at these words, uh, thorns and briars, I mean, we're going to find that they, uh, the first time it represents, uh, is represented is Genesis 3.18. Thorns also and thistles shall bring forth to thee. So this is thorns. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So this is a correction that God has given man because of sin, from the origin of sin, right? Yeah, yeah. And then Jesus' uh, parable, thinking of his parable too. Yeah. Um, now, Isaiah 32, so let's go there. Now, they, they give us 12 and 13 here. Um, this is um, about uh, lots of different things happening here. So I'm not, but we'll just deal with these verse here, verses here. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. So when we look at days and years, what is this a reference to? Chronology. Chronology. Okay. Ye careless women. And women, of course, are churches. Right? Yes. And the vintage shall fail and the gathering shall not come. So the vintage here referring, of course, to the, the grapes and the gathering and, and the gathering referring to the spring harvest. Right. So so there's this famine because of this is the vintage also referring to doctrines yes it can right so I, I was just referring to it literally but as a symbol yes uh this is the wine and the bread right we want to look at it that way right this the fall and the spring harvests which produce wine and bread which both refer to doctrine right Tremble ye women that are at ease and be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall uh, lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken and the multitude of the city be left. The forts and the towers shall be for the den, for dens forever, and the joy of wild asses, and the pasture of flocks, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. So this is referring to what period of time? So what period of time is being referenced here? Because we have here, um, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and righteous remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. So is this not talking about the end of the world? Yes. And if the spirit is poured out on the end of the world, that's the latter rain, right? Yeah. Most of it is. Okay. And so we have this period of time prior to that in which a message is rejected and God shall bring up. Now, one of the things that they reject, so because many days and years shall they ye be troubled. So we have chronology here. Now, if we're going to take, um, and there's other verses too, but um, uh, let's see if I, I think it's Ezekiel, the one in Ezekiel. Yeah. 
when we look at thorn and thistles, every time, of course, it's a negative thing. Um, uh, it can refer to the destruction of the wicked. I'm not going to read all the verses here. Um, so I think this one is probably the best one in understanding that, that this is a type of correction that's going to come, right? They're going to be taught with thorns and briars. So they're going to be instructed. Right? That's what we see in Judges chapter 8. So thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Sukkoth. So this is a type of correction that is needed in order for the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon God's people. And then he's going to beat down the tower of Penuel and, and kill the men of the city. So Penuel, this is the tower, right? So the tower, the Migdal, we often think of as a watchtower. And Penuel's the face of God. So, so this message, this rejection of support from Sukkoth and Penuel is going to result in the instruction of the men of Sukkoth and the killing of the men of the city of Penuel, but also the beating down of the tower. Now, we're not taking this literally as referring to that God's going to destroy the American group. You know, don't, don't take it in that way. Um, because there's the beating down of the tower. So would this just mean that the role that the, that the American group could have had as being watchmen is being removed from them. So is the city there a church? Well, a, a city can represent a church, but it usually refers more to organization than to like a spiritual church. Because it, it refers to the civic structure. So really what should have happened is the American group should have been leading out in the organization of this message. Correct? Agreed. These were the elders. These are the people that should have been leading out. But instead, they didn't support the message. That is, the role and responsibility that they had was neglected. And, and as such, it's going to be removed from them. That's all. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it seems to, seems to line up with that. Okay. <clears throat> and, then, um, and then he said unto Ziba and Zalmunna, what manner of men were they whom ye slew? So this is where we're going to get the reference that they were there at Mount Tabor, right? Which is in the story of Sisera. Each one resembled the children of a king. So there is some glory in this message that they recognize. The messages of Ziba and Zalmunna had recognized the character of the message. And, and if we go back, if we're trying to say that Ziba and Zalmunna have to go back um, to Parminder's time, that means there is a message in this movement that recognized the, the glory of the message of, of Deborah and Barak, right? That is, they stood there, these messages of Ziba and Zamuna, and recognized that they were rejecting light, in a sense, right? Because they're going to kill them, even though they each one resembled the children of the king. So they're going to be attacking the messenger. Now, now Gideon, the message of July 18th, says, They were my brethren, even the sons of my mother. The Lord liveth as the Lord liveth. If ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. So even back then, at that time, people should have been supporting this chronology and were not. 
And then in 820, we have, um, and he said unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. And Ziba and Zamuna said, rise thou and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Ziba and Zalmunna and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Now, I'm sort of just giving you what I think here, and, and I do want you to respond. Um, but if we're going to look at Jether, um, this is a name that means, uh, I have to write here for, I can't remember now. Um, but he's a youth, right? And he's going to, he's, he's the firstborn. What, what does it mean firstborn? What is that a reference to? It means abundance. That's what uh, as a, uh, either means. So Gideon's oldest son is named either, either. He's his firstborn. So the firstborn is the one who receives the inheritance, right? Correct. The inheritance and the double blessing. Right. So, so who is Jether? What is he representing? But he is not going to slay Ziba and Zalmunna because he's yet a youth. He's not going to draw his sword. So who's not going to draw their sword that should be drawing their sword that is an abundance and is typified by the firstborn? What, who would this represent in this movement? I guess the question is, where, are there people in this movement? So we're going we're gonna to say that Jether represents people, but it's obviously a message as well. But people are always attached to a message that don't take up their sword. That is, they don't spend the time to study God's word. And that they look to the elders instead to decide for them. They fear because they're still young in this message. That when these things are happening, they're not going to be acting in the way that they should. They're the ones who are receiving the inheritance, right? They're the children of the king, so to speak. They, they're the firstborn. But they're not standing. They're not doing what they're supposed to do as far as st Bible study. Is, does that, can this represent people in the movement like that? Are there people in the movement? who should be taking up their sword and attacking the message of Ziba and Zamuna that aren't. Yes. Okay. And so Ziba and Zamuna are going to ultimately defeated, and in a sense here, willingly, right? They want to be defeated by Gideon himself. That is the message of July 18th. And then when it says, and, and, and Gideon took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks, we already we examined this before. We know that this has to do with Islam. And, and that this ornament is a pendant, a round tire like the moon, right? That's the idea. So these are are moon symbols. So we have a symbol here for Islam as well. Islam symbolized by the lunar crescent. And we're uh, we teach it about the trumpets. Islam in this movement. Yeah. And but but yet but like um you haven't heard of it from the American group or the right. 
So the meeting, I haven't heard anything of that. Exactly. So the message of July 18th, which was originally supposed to be about Islam. I mean, even though we, we take July 18th and we say, well, it was correct. We, we, we're trying to ignore what it actually meant. We're ignoring the, the study of the things that we need to. I mean, and especially when it comes to the study of July 18th, it's understanding the chronology connected to the prophecy of Revelation 9 that becomes extremely important. So the six day fourth month, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Gideon, the message of Gideon, July 18th, is going to take up the significance of Islam. Now we know, of course, we dealt with Gideon's ephod. And I'm saying that Gideon's ephod again is representing these this construction of this chronology that exists within this movement. So again, Judges 8 doesn't have the same, um, the way that it's laid out isn't the same as uh, the other chapters that we could just lay them out. Now, I also say that Gideon's ephod is, in Judges 8, is a repeat and enlarge of these other lines. That is, we can take chapter 8 and lay it over top, or, or chapter 8, um, 22 to 28, and lay it over top of these lines again. So it's actually another zoom in to one of the waymarks of the line that we have constructed. And then I could, I could see that. I yeah. could see that. Yeah. And then the death of Gideon um, has, has other significance. So we don't take these sections. Gideon Zephod and the death of Gideon and and put them in this line that we constructed. These would be uh, a zoom in to way marks on this line. And, and the way that I would look at it is the ephod is really a zoom into this 126 days, or maybe even into uh, these two way marks, December 25th and February 12th. Because what we see happening um, with both Colin and Odilio's predictions is that they are using this um, information that we have from July 18th. And the chronological structures exist in both Colin's and Odilio's presentations. But these become a stumbling block. That is, it's a misuse of chronology to illustrate and support something that the chronology doesn't actually support. I mean, that was the thing that was interesting when I examined both Odilio's and Colin's studies, and I could say, well, the chronology is cor correct, but it doesn't support their conclusions. That is, they use the chronology as sort of a witness that what they're doing is correct, but there's nothing about the chronology that supports their conclusions. They just present a correct chronology. But that chronology, as we saw, supports an entire structure. And that structure goes all the way back to November 9th, 1989, and all the way to April 5th, 2020, or, or 2020, 2030, April 5th, 2030. But especially it marks January 11th, to 12, 2023, because that's where uh, Collins' structure ends. And, and we know that that's connected to the April 5th, 2030, 2030 date. So, so the story of the ephod doesn't fit on this line. But, but we should be able to fit, um, fit these in some other way. Now, I have the February 12th date, which Judges 8, we have Judges 8 there, but not a verse. And I have February 16th and Judges 8, and not a verse. And then I put January 11th to 12th, 2023, just Judges 8, not a verse. So if we were going to look at Odilio's specifically, uh, what, what verse would we use to mark the February 12th, 2022 date?
I'm not clear on that. Okay. Well, we're looking at these verses. So we know that Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle before the sun was up. That's Judges 8.13, a symbol of Palmona. And Agreed. And, and I would tend to want to put uh, this in connection with, and, and from 8.13, and the young man of Sukkoth that he inquires of. Um and the three score and 17 men. We, we know that we can fit this in with this structure that begins October 2nd to 9th, right? So, so this whole structure is part of this. So, so we'd have to ask when, what verse then could we take and, and, and here we have eight. So we go from 13 all this way here. They're captured. But what about eight verse 20? Could we could we take this as. Because what Odilio could have been doing, here's my view, what Odilio could have been doing is he could have been. Because um, what he did in his structure. He could have been actually supporting, and he's trying to support July 18th, but it's his conclusions that are wrong because he did not draw his sword. He would be, it would be in his study, this principal aspect. Now, we would say, well, Odilio is doing lots of studying, right? And, he, and he's using some Bible verses. But is he slaying Zeba and Zalmunna? No. Well, no, I mean, he's not. Right. So to me, that was the disappointment, I guess, I had with Odilia's study. So I'm just going to say it's 8 verse 20. Okay. And then we have Judges 8. Uh, above February 16th. Now I'm taking February 16th as uh, this point. And now this is going to be four days later after a Delia study, but this is where um, the Canadian group um, no longer, because they put out their email. Um, saying that, you know, that they're going to have their meetings, but they don't include the link to my meetings on February 16th. They did the week before, but they no longer do on February 16th. And, and there's a lot connected with this, a lot of background history that's not really needful at this time. Okay, but it's, it's also interesting that that occurred, as you're saying, on February 16th. Yes. Because if you reorganize the numbers, you've got another 126. Yeah, you also have a 216, which is a symbol of 666, because six times six times six. Right. And notice that I have it below December 25th, which is a symbol of the Sunday law. Right. So this, this here is going to be... Um, I don't know how I'd characterize this as a word, a single word. Um, I'll just put here email. <laughs> okay, so so if we're going to to put this here, February sixteenth, um, so this is Zeba and Zamuna basically calling for Gideon. To, to slay them. So could I put 821 here? Because in, in doing that, in, in removing the, the links to my meetings, I and mean, maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but this is sort of in a in a very symbolic way that they don't want to be connected to 
the message of the messages that we have. They don't want people to be doing this, but they also are in an indirect way. Uh, this is a type of challenge. Is it not? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's how I would look at what happened because that's how I looked at it. But, you know, there's a lot of history in here. There's some conversations, email exchanges and phone calls between me and Colin, um, but that's where they end up. February 16th, they remove the links to my meetings. And now Judges 8 ends up being this um, what would I, you know, if I'm going to take this, I can take this Gideon's ephod and sort of place it there. Um, I mean, I could, you know, try to say this, but, but I, I don't think that that's what, what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to say that uh, this, we're going to skip the Gideon's ephod and um, we would, we would go then to the, uh, the death of Gideon. And maybe maybe that's not the correct thing to do. But what I don't have is I just don't have a verse here other than that this is the end of the story. But we know that this part, Gideon's ephod, is going to be a repeat and enlarge of this history. And the death of Gideon um, has, has a bunch of symbolism in it that that also would suggest um, like that we could lay it back over our line again. But, you know, this isn't the death of the July 18, 2020 message in the sense that it ends. This has to do with uh, the roles that are then taken up. So the story of Jerubal is going to definitely repeat or not Jeroboam, um, Abimelech is going to repeat our history again, right? So the only thing I could say is that we could take Judges 8.22 and place it as um, this date here, but it's just that the story of the ephod is not going to follow January 11th to 12, 2023, at least not in my thinking because I can take this story and lay it over top. So uh, Angela puts a note here about censorship. So what are you saying about that then? As far as our lines are concerned? Well, when they, they decided not to post your link, I'm saying they're like the scribes and Pharisees preventing others from entering in because they don't want to enter in themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you're talking about the 18 weeks and the 126 days could be par parallel to the 18 years Israel served Eglon, king of Moab. Um, well, in, in laying out Judges uh, chapter three, I mean, we put that to an earlier history. But, uh, I mean, it's something we could look at again. I, I think it just typifies it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's definitely um, a censorship that goes on there. But I'm just putting Judges 822 as marking this January 11th to 12th, 2023. That's going to be the end of Colin's line. And... So I'm just taking it where they say, you know, rule over us. Um, but the message of July 18th is not going to be um, used in the way that people want. Right. But it, there still is going to be a misuse of it. But I'm still putting this back to earlier. So I don't know. Maybe that's something we're going to have to investigate further but our time is up so that's what i put as the line for now and again these are all tentative i mean there's parts of these lines that are quite solid in their symbol um and other parts that you know we still 
we still need further study on. Like the 77 days, pretty solid. Yeah, the 77 days, the 49 days, the 126 days, and the day. December date 6th. Yeah. 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 All of these things, December 6th is solid. I, I still think July 19th is solid. Um, February 16th, I mean, maybe in some ways, you know, it is quite possible that this story could continue uh, and, and that the end of this is all going to be something in the future that we don't fully see and that we might just connect February 16th to, you know, February 12th. But but the fact that it's a symbol of, of 666, which is a symbol of the Sunday law, and it's below December 25th in these lines, um, that's why I would place it there. But, but sometimes you just don't have enough understanding to understand the line completely, especially when it's something in the future. Question. Yep. Um, do, uh, do we throw out the Judah and Israel, the kings, like, or the 19 and the 20, SDA and the Republicans? Okay, so, so Judah and Israel refer to, of course, the northern and the southern kingdoms. And as far as you're asking, you're probably talking about how we use the king of the north and the king of the south as symbols of uh, Republicans and Democrats, respectively, right? Because of the Civil War. I, I was thinking the SDA's Judah and Israel was a Republican, and I thought that's how it went. Okay, so I don't know if you would put that Republican in there. So if you have the SDA's as being Judah, you have... Um, the Protestants, I guess that's what you mean, being um, Northern Israel, right? So where do you get that number for them from? The number? Yeah, it's one is 19, one is 20. Oh, okay. So that has to do with um, the kings of Judah and Israel. So the Republicans, the Republican government, which, which is in this sense Protestant, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we don't throw that away. The 20 and the 19, no, that's still valid. So then is Biden UN? Because he's not actually running the country, he's, being, he's a puppet. Right, Biden's the UN. Yeah, December 6th on... on uh, 2020, the United States, or 2021, pardon me, January 6th, 2021, uh, the United States was taken over by the globalists. Trump is the last president of the United States. He's not going to be president again in, in fulfilling any prophetic role. Right? His role, because we're in a typical line and we understand what happened, and this is a type of what's happening, but it's in a typical line that applies to this movement specifically, to the history of this movement. So yeah, so the 20 and the 19 still stand. But they don't stand if you uh, take into account what Colin has predicted, because he's predicting that you have to have Trump become the president in this history right now in 2022. And that just is not gonna happen. You know, we didn't Thank have, we did, yeah, because we didn't have the sweep, you know, the red wave. Um, and and it's even unclear. It, it seems pretty clear that neither party is going to have control of the Senate because of the two uh, independents. Right. So neither one's going to have control of the Senate. And, and, and definitely you would need two thirds majority to impeach. Plus, you'd need Congress. Uh, to impeach um, Biden and uh, Harris. And you'd need Trump to be uh, the Speaker of the House. So the, all these things that this scenario uh, didn't come into play. So the only way that that can be true is the way that we applied it in regard to J January 6th, 2021. 
that Trump fulfilled his role. To have him come again is a denial of that. That would be looking like setting another date for the for Christ to come back after October 22nd, 1844. So, okay. Making, making predictions. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that question. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this study. And we pray that you can bless each person uh, until we meet tomorrow evening or Sabbath morning. Um, as we are able to participate in these meetings. Uh, we pray again for Dwight, that you can help him as he has to present on Sabbath. And um, also, Lord, we pray for the meeting Sabbath afternoon as well. We just ask that you can give us um, wisdom and understanding as we open your word and study both together and individually. Be with us now through this day, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.